One of the toughest conversations is one with an angry donor. I've had my, more than my fair share of those calls. I've done some things right and I've definitely done some things wrong. I'll share with you what I've learned so you don't make the same mistakes. With 1989 in my first telemarketing campaign, we had hired a reputable company out of Akron, Ohio, and I felt comfortable about the cause concept and that the company would sell our cause and represent us well. The results from the first night came back strong and there were a good number of completed calls. Those are donors who were actually reached and an above average gift size. I was feeling good about that morning as I presented the outcome to my executive director. Later that day, I got a call forward to me from the receptionist. She said a donor was on the line and he didn't sound happy. For the next 30 minutes, he proceeded to dress me down one side and then the other. He let me know how impersonal the call was, how it sounded like the caller was reading from a script, and how the caller knew very little about our organization. I felt like a whipped puppy. At the end, I assured him that he would never get another call from the company. Oh, was that a mistake? It seems that the donor had a duplicate record in our system from an outlier gift he gave using his office address and not his home, and he used his name only and not he and his wife, as most gifts had been. Our duplicate checker didn't catch the address and name difference, and thus his name came up again that very night. Oh, my goodness, I can't adequately do justice to the call the next morning from him. I did some research and found the duplicate record and called back to explain the mistake. Surprisingly, he was gracious once I called him back and he understood what happened. But I learned a few valuable lessons during that exchange and other exchanges that I'll be sharing with you today. Lesson number one, it's inevitable that you'll get a donor complaint. There is not a nonprofit that hasn't shared with me their worst donor complaint story. If you haven't yet had a story, wait, it will come. Prepare yourself for the inevitable. The fact is that you can't please everyone. You can send out a letter and get a phenomenal response rate, yet you can almost guarantee that someone will have a concern with that letter. How you respond to that concern is very important, and I don't mean just respond to the person. How much weight you give to the concern is also important. In the 1980s, our $3 million direct mail department was shut down completely because of one complaint letter. A leader responded with a knee-jerk reaction and didn't fully think through the ramifications of his decision. Six months later, that same leader asked why our overall income was down so dramatically. A colleague reminded him that our direct mail was shut down and that was the reason for the decrease. To which the leader responded, well, what idiot made that decision? Oops. <laughs> Needless to say, direct mail was back up and running that week and never got shut down again. There are donors' concerns that are legitimate and may actually make your systems or processes better. There are concerns that may cause you to think. And there are concerns that you'll just discard because they are so off the wall. Number two, don't hide from the conversation. The worst thing you can do is not respond to a donor's concerns at all. If a donor writes a letter or calls with a concern, write or call them back. Responding and responding immediately shows your interest in them. It shows your respect for their concerns, and it shows you value their opinion. Not responding says exactly the opposite. If you agree with their concern, it's easy to call them and let them know you appreciate their concerns and what you're going to do to change things. Those are the easy calls. It's when you don't agree with them, or especially when you think you were unjustly treated, targeted, or judged, that's when it becomes a tough call. When I ran the correspondence department for our nonprofit, I had an enormous amount of letters from people who said something to the effect, Tom Brokaw or Dan Rather were talking to them through the metal in their fillings. Those letters don't warrant responses, but most definitely do. Having the conversation is so important, you need to view every donor or partner as an owner or a shareholder, and as such, have a say in the running of the organization. You don't have to agree with or implement every recommendation or concern, but I do believe you need to listen. That brings me to point number three. Just listen and don't argue. I can't tell you how many times I've turned around a bad situation with a kind word or a listening ear. Sometimes the donor just needs to verbalize their concern. 
And frankly, I can't tell you how often I've gotten a vicious or even a vile voicemail, and when I call the person back, they're all complained out. I've even had some say, you know, it really wasn't that bad. But listen first and don't get defensive. You don't need to solve every problem. There are some people that you'll never convince they were wrong. Then there are some that you'll change their mind with a well-reasoned discussion. I once turned around an irate donor who was so upset that he wasn't pre-assigned a seat at a dinner into a donor who regularly gave $25,000 a year. I simply listened to his concern, found him a seat, and proceeded to love on him for the next few hours, checking on the hotel service and other issues that night. And the next day, I called to see how he was and even getting his opinion over the years on some decisions we made. All that softened him to the point where he became this nonprofit most faithful giver. But getting defensive and arguing with a donor almost never pays off, and in most cases loses you a donor for a lifetime. Number four, never make promises that you can't keep. Just like I should not have promised the donor in an earlier story that he would never get a call again if I couldn't confirm that, you shouldn't make a promise you can't keep. If it isn't your place to say how a donation is spent, don't promise the money will go there. If you can't promise the president or CEO of your organization will call them back, don't say he or she will do that. The worst thing you can do for your reputation is to make a promise to a donor and not keep that promise. Most studies show that baby boom donors trust us until we violate their trust. There is no surer way to violate their trust than to promise something and not deliver. You don't have much more than your integrity, and if you lose that, you'll have lost a lot, and most likely the donor with that. Always view donor concern calls as an opportunity, an opportunity to listen to someone, an opportunity to help someone, an opportunity to do something for someone, and most of all, an opportunity to appreciate someone. And even better, you may make a friend of that donor. I can't tell you how often I've become the go-to person for a donor when they have a question, and I like being that for them. I like being there, especially major donors. The person they think about first when they think of our organization. See your donor's concerns as a good thing, not a bad thing. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add a comment below if you feel better about your concern issues. If you still have some anxiety about concern calls or letters, let me know that as well. If you aren't already a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified when the next video is released. Not clicking the bell, you won't be notified. Don't avoid lessons you'll learn from a difficult conversation and know I'll always be there to help you. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Watch this next video and I'll see you in the next video.